Hello folks. Today we've got a very serious subject. So I'll try to make it as pleasant as possible, but there are facts that have to be stated. A lot of people sort of live in a dream world. There are two things that nobody wants to hear on a yacht. The first one is Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. We are abandoning ship. This means that you're then going to put your life in danger because you're leaving the very vessel that you were relying on for your safety. And you're either getting into a dinghy because you haven't got a life raft or you have to launch the life raft. Which is not as simple as it sounds. The other one you hear is Mayday, 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 Man Overboard. Now, this will apply to everybody, whether you're carrying four or five people, two people, no matter what. I'm going to tell you a little story. There were two yachts that went out and there were six people on each yacht and they met in the pub. <clears throat> They've been in the pub since 10 in the morning and decided about two o'clock, let's go out for a sail. It wasn't a particularly windy day, about four, just in five. Two reasonable sized yachts, four girls and two guys on each boat. Now the two guys on each boat knew the boats because it was theirs. The girls were just along for the ride. So of course there's life jackets for four. So to start with, you've got six people on those two boats that stand the chance of drowning if they fall overboard. They've no harness, they're not attached to the boat and they have no life preserver. The other thing is, they were half pissed. So they went out and they were playing around, they were sailing lovely, the girls were enjoying it, everything was going fine until the wind came up a bit. And because the boys weren't watching what they were doing, they put a girl on the helm who didn't know what she was doing. She accidentally jogged one of the boats and one of the girls fell overboard. On the other yacht, when they saw this, the guy that was on the helm immediately turned his boat towards them and he knocked one of his crew members with the boom into the drink. That was the guy, his mate. It also happened to be the fiancé of the girl on the other boat. Now, in this ensuing accident, which should never have happened, two things. You never, ever, ever go to sea having drunk. Not just drunk, you shouldn't drink alcohol before you go to sea. It's the same as a car. If an accident happens at sea due to drink, you can be prosecuted for exactly the same thing. The story went like this. They then decided that they would try and get the girl back on board and the guy. So the guy came round to the boat that the girl fell off. They got him alongside, took him down the stern. And what did they do? They lowered the bathing platform. He then attempted, with his life jacket on, to get hold of the bathing the ladder. And as he got hold of the ladder, the boat rose over a, over a wave which brought the stern up and pulled him away from the ladder then the boat came down and believe it or not a seven ton yacht coming down on top of you did exactly what it did to this guy it obliterated his head it stove the top of his head in and killed him outright so now we're worried about a man in the water that's bleeding the girls are going manic because they don't know what to do and there's all this blood in the water and the other yacht is going to get the girl. The girl is coming towards the yacht the man died on. She has no life jacket and she's swimming towards the yacht trying to get to it and the yacht is trying to sail towards it when the other yacht comes down and didn't see her. The yacht came down off a wave, picked her up by the shoulders and rammed her into the boat and broke her neck. The lifeboat was eventually called when they sobered up. Luckily, because they didn't have any of their VHF radios on board the boat because the boats were being serviced for the winter or whatever, the lifeboat arrived to find one dead girl with a broken neck and one dead boy with his head stoved in. So because they didn't take heed not to drink when they go out, they didn't take heed to make sure everybody had a life jacket they didn't take heed to tell people what they must do in an emergency. You had six panicking girls, one panicking man, one dead man, one dead girl, 
and one skipper that sobered up so quick it must be unbelievable. The downside is two losses of life. Now you can't get that back. And what's even sadder is they were both engaged. So that's two lives lost. That's children that won't be born. That's mums and dads that have to be told. So when a policeman arrives at the door and says, I'm terribly sorry, madam, but I have to inform you that your daughter died today in a sailing accident due to the fucking stupidity of the people on the boat because they were pissed. And I'm sorry about my language, but that's how I feel. So the first and foremost thing is forget the alcohol. If you're on a boat, you don't drink. Not while you're at sea. If you're in the harbour and not going out for a few days, fine. But remember, even in a harbour, you can fall off a pontoon, you can slip off a boat, you can bang your head on a cleat, you can hang yourself in the rigging. There's all sorts of ways you can hurt yourself when you're drunk. So think about that. I know it's nice to have a drink, but perhaps wait till you're home. Eh? So we come to the preparing. If you're going out on a boat, and just say for argument's sake, and I've seen this a lot of times, you have a husband and wife, or a boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever, two mates, two girls even, or a couple of older ladies, a couple of older guys, and you're going out on a boat, but one of you owns the boat and the other one's just a friend. So when you get on board, the first thing you should tell him is where the emergency equipment is. You should show him the VHF and show him how to use it. Now you get these cards, that you can actually stick by your VHF and it tells you exactly what to do. Press the mic, da -da 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 -da. it tells you all the things to say. There are several calls you can make. If a person is injured and you need medical attention, then you call out uh, Pam Pam Medico, which means you're asking for medical professional help. It will be responded to by a doctor and you'll be given the necessary help to help that person at the time while the lifeboat is coming to you. The other one you'll have, you can have a pan pan because you're broken down. You have a gear failure, engine failure, a rigging failure, some failure on the boat that prevents you from sailing it safely. That is a pan pan, which means you're broken down. Pan pan means it's, it's broken. Then you have the worst one, the mayday. This is only called out when life is in danger. In other words, if the vessel is in such a condition that you may have to leave it or that it's breaking up, and it's an endangerment to you to stay on board. This is a mayday. It means, aid me, help me, I'm in trouble. These are the calls we never want to make, but when you're going out, it's a lovely day. I've done this dozens of times with Sally. We've gone out for a sail. The weather for Karras is good, three or four, which for us is nothing. We go out, within a few hours, the wind comes up. And suddenly it's a six. Whoops, there it goes. It's popped up. We've got gusts to seven. Now, we're always prepared for this. Because Sally and I have learnt to sell. Well, I learnt to sell many years before Sally. But Sally and I learnt to sell properly. Sally knows all the names for the parts. She knows that a halyard has two parts. It has the head of the halyard, which is attached to a sail. And the part that you pull, this is called the fall of the halyard. She knows that when you raise a sail you make the fall of the halyard fast on a cleat. It's not that shiny thing with two horns, it's a cleat. She knows the names, she knows the, the, the fore of the sail, she knows it's the luff, the leech, the foot, the head. She knows all the correct terminology for the parts on the boat. Sally also knows how to bleed the engine, should it get air in it. Because what if I have an accident and the only thing she can use is the engine and there's an airlock? Who's going to fix it? I'm not. So Sally can. Sally can also navigate. As you've seen on my navigation video, I've showed you how we navigate. Sally does this all the time. All the time. She loves to navigate. She knows how to handle this boat. She can reef it. She can sail it. She can motor it. She can moor it up. She can anchor it. She can take it off the anchor. She can hove to. <coughs> Everything I can, I've taught Sally. So when we sail together, you've got two crew on this boat. So if something happens to one, the other one doesn't panic. Now here's an expression you want to learn. Write this down, put it anywhere you like, and never forget it. Panic kills. When something goes wrong, if you're not fully trained, or you haven't taught yourself and your partner how to handle the situation, it gets out of hand, because your mind will straight away tell you, 
you're in trouble. You see, by training, it's like the military. In the military, people say, how do soldiers do so much with so little? It's training. They train 24-7. So it becomes like a muscle memory. So that when something happens, they know immediately what to do, and they know immediately what their job is, and so do their mates. Now this is how you have to be with your mates or your partners on the boat. So instead of looking at your wife, and I'm sorry, I know a lot of people like this, instead of looking at your wife or your girlfriend or your partner and saying, yeah, it's fine, make the coffee, you know, make the lunch and sit in the cockpit and look pretty, start teaching her. You can make a cup of coffee, you can make a meal. You're not helpless, but she is when she's at sea if she knows nothing. The other thing is women a lot cleverer than us, whether you like it or not, they are. You see, we're boys. We're born children. We're born boys. The only difference is as we get older, the man is just another name because we're still boys with bigger toys. Girls are born and become women. They become mothers. They learn responsibility to look after somebody's life. So they take it more seriously. So try remembering next time you go out, teach your wife to helm the boat. Throw a fender and a bucket overboard and say to her, see if you can pick that up. And if she can't work it out, then you teach her how to do it. Teach her to tack and jive. Teach her how to bring the boat up into the wind. And there's a simple thing you can teach her. Or your mate. I'm not being sexist here either. If you have a tiller on the boat, that's the piece of wood that comes out from the rudder stock that steers the boat. Always teach them. If you're sailing and somebody falls overboard, or an emergency arises, tiller to, tiller to the boom. If you push the tiller towards the boom, the boat will immediately round up and come head to wind. You then let the sheets go, so there's no power in the sails, and the boat stops. You can then start your motor. If you have a wheel on the boat, remember this, wheel away. Now, when you turn a tiller, you turn the tiller to the right and the boat turns to the left. With a wheel on the boat, you turn it like a car. If you want to go to the left or to port side, you turn it to port side or the left. So you wheel away. So you wheel away from the boom if you have a wheel. And this will bring your boat to do exactly the same thing. It will round up and be in what's called in stays. In other words, the sails are not drawing and the boat stops. So that's just a couple of basics you can teach. Teach your wife the navigation way that I've taught you. It's very easy to do. I know quite a few women that Sally have taught that pick it up in five minutes. But it gives them such confidence. They have come back and told us that it feels so much happier knowing that when they're out of sight of land, they know how to get to land. They know how to get somewhere. That's a great safety feature, you know, if there's just two of you sailing. Or even if there's four or five of you sailing, it's a great safety feature to know where you are and how to get where you want to go, or to get to safety, or to get out of danger. Now the thing is you have to remember is sailing is one of these things that the weather forecasters are lovely people. Sailing people always love them because they never get it right. So be prepared for the worst. When you go out, it might be a lovely sunny day, you're in your t-shirt and your shorts. Great, get a tan. But on your t-shirt, make sure you've got your life jacket. Make sure you've got your crutch strap. That's the strap that goes from the small of your back in between your legs and comes up in front of you by your belly button and attached to the belt on your life jacket. Because if you don't, and you end up in the water, and somebody comes to grab you by the life jacket, they'll pull it over your head, and you're in the water with no life jacket. But with the crutch strap, they can lift you. Now, I'm hoping in the summer to do a man overboard video for, with the people with um, everythingboating.co.uk, Paul and Jared. And we're going to do it real time so you can actually see how it works. Now, we have a system. I weigh 71 kilos. Sally is a lot less than me. I'm 5 foot 8 and she's 4 foot 9. But Sally can lift me out the water without any help from me whatsoever, one handed. Now this system, I'm not going to explain it here, I will show it in a video. So okay, so we've done the man overboard bit. Now when you're preparing people, when people come on board the boat, sit down and have a coffee before you go anywhere. And just say to them, 
I'm only telling you this in a safety for safety for your safety for all our safety run them around or walk them around the boat and explain what this is for when you're coming in that you tie a line on the midship cleat if you have one so that when you come in alongside you step onto the pontoon you never ever stand outside the guard wires and jump you stand inside the guard wires and when the boat is alongside you step onto the pontoon you leap into danger so you teach them how to come alongside you then show them how to start the motor you make sure the seacock's open you make sure the battery is charged and the battery master switch is on <coughs> you also make sure your domestics are on so that your navigation lights and navigation equipment works gps and chart plotters are not rocket science they're almost self-explanatory it doesn't take much to show somebody that okay we'll put in we're going sailing today i'll give you an example where i come from guernsey you're going to sail to the south of sark uh, up the back of sark the back of Herm, and then come down the grand russell it's not a difficult passage so you put in the waypoints for it and you put in sark south sark east Herm northeast and harbour now if it all goes tits up you make sure this is written down on a piece of paper so that if you've got down to Sark South and something goes wrong and somebody has to take over, you tell them that if we're there, all you have to do is turn the course around to go back home <coughs> to harbour. If you're on the east side, you have to go up to the north. So you have to go up to northeast home. And if you're off the north, north of home and the harbour is visible, you then tell them if an emergency arises, you go from there to, to the harbour. Simple explanation, show them how it's done, explain to them what you do and tell them how they steer the boat so they know how to steer the boat. If they can't sail, teach them to take the sails down. Teach them to bring the boat head to, bring the sails down and start the motor. Also show them how to use the radio. Now I actually had somebody say to me, you can't use a VHF without a license. The regulations actually state that any person on board a vessel that is in a distressed situation may use the VHF to raise help to save life. So whether you've got a license or not, if you're not the proper, uh, proprietor of the boat, an emergency arises, you can use that radio to call for help. So make sure you show them how to use the radio. Now, if things get really serious, I hope that you've got a personal location beacon or an EPIRB. If you have either of those, show them what you do in the case of a dire emergency. If somebody is gravely injured, if the boat is struck, <coughs> or you strike something at sea, something breaks away inside the boat and you're taking on water, show them how to activate this. Show them on the chart that you can have that card how to put out a mayday. So that's just the basics. Then ensure each person that's going out sailing has a life jacket don't have to buy them you can hire them make sure it's got a crutch strap make sure it has a line that attaches you to the safety line on the boat another subject for another day so everybody is safely on board you tell them nobody if there's men on board nobody stands in the shroud to have a pee nobody stands over the stern to have a pee you won't see a lady do it she'll go down to the heads and that's what men do if you want to have a pee go down to the heads that's what it's for peeing over the side is one of the greatest risks you face in losing your life if the boat should lurch if a powerboat passes you and your boat suddenly rolls 35 degrees you're in so remember that heads are to be used right uh, where should we go in now life sling life rings if you have somebody that's fallen in the water how do you get them back? Well, as I've said, the first thing to do is to stop the boat. And the simplest way to stop any sailing boat is to bring it head to wind. And the easy way is, as I've told you, if you have a tiller, push the tiller to the boom. The boat will turn round and come head to wind. You'll see all the sails flapping like mad. Stop it there, drop the sails and start the motor. If you can't drop the sails quick enough, just let them flap. 
they won't hurt but mind the boom start your motor if you see the person that's in the water you want to get them back now there are several things you can buy on the market to get people back on board you have a throw bag it's a little bag that has a coit inside and a very light floating line strong enough to lift you up a floating line by using the bag as it's instructed you can throw this quite a long way another one is you have a rescue coit it looks like a life ring you can throw that to make sure a lines attached to it it's easier to get them back but even if there isn't a line attached to it they can get to it keep themselves afloat so you have more time to get to them the other thing is a life sling now these are wonderful pieces of kit now seago safety do these and i love them it's a floating belt it's big enough to get the biggest people i've seen into them in fact i've got a friend who is enormous and i've seen him get one on when you get to it you put it over your head and it's got a ring on it you pull the ring tight to you so it's over your head under your arms and pull tight so what you do then is you keep your hands in front of you okay over the private bits ladies and men and keep your hands down there don't lift your arms if you lift your arms you can be pulled out the sling then the person who's on the vessel can pull the line and bring you to the boat now to get you back on board that's another subject i will cover later but you've got the person alongside the boat never listen to this carefully never ever try and get somebody back on board by the bathing ladder or the bathing platform and never ever try and get somebody over the bow as i explained when a boat pitches you have seven tons coming down and if you're in the wrong place you're dead go to the side of the boat if the skipper has done his job right he will be to windward of you that means when the wind is blowing in your face the boat will be in front of you making the sea calmer and the boat will be approaching you making it easier to get you to the boat now people say what happens if the boat rides over you by the time the person is pulling you in and you reach the boat the line will be too tight for you to be dragged under the boat so there's not a worry there now for those of you who might think well i haven't got all the money to get a life sling yet but i still want to go sailing fenders have a fender with a floating line on it good two three hundred feet now i've had a go at this and i'm an old twat i've thrown a sling and i can get it near as damn it about 60 feet i can throw a fender over 100 feet now you say a fender what good is that well the fenders i've got on my boat are 26 they're 30 inches long they're nine inches fat they hold sufficient air to float a man heavier than me so you've got a line attached to it the guy's feeling a bit tired what do you do i'll tell you exactly what you do the fender's thrown to you and you can get hold the fender Take the line with the fender in front of you and pass the line through your legs and out past your bum so that you're holding onto the fender in front and lean forward. You will float on that fender and you'll be dragged backwards, not forwards, so therefore you won't be getting water in your face when you're being pulled towards the boat. Just another little one for you. Simple things, but they work. Now, you've got a lot of wives and kids on boats children can be a blessing they can be a pain in the ass but I'll tell you what kids learn quick really really quick you take your children down to the pontoon and before you ever take them sailing you spend three or four days on that boat and you run them through what you want them to do each person on board has a task now, as an example on here in an emergency situation sally's responsibility if i give her the order abandon ship she launches our dinghy it's tied on the midship cleat so that it sits outside the door she takes our grab bag our water our food and she gets in the dinghy i put out a mayday i set off the epurb and sally has the plb in the bag we then abandon ship only as a last resort but we abandon ship you're then in a dinghy that i can row 
This is our preference for the type of boat and the sailing we do. We never sail more than about 10, 12 miles offshore. So we know exactly. Now we faced this situation last year when we hit a tree. I told Sally to prepare to abandon ship because we hit it bloody hard. It stopped us at seven knots and we didn't know how much damage. So I put a call, Sally was ready to go, and then I went forward to inspect what damage there was. When I found there was none, I told Sally, stand down, retrieve the dinghy, come back on board, and I put the call out, we were okay. And we headed for a safe port and told them we were arriving with damage. But it worked. It took less than a minute and a half to be off this boat. That's because we practice. That's the word, practice. Practice makes perfect. You must have heard that at school. Your parents have told you. And the other saying you can remember, if you prepare to fail, if, sorry, if you fail to prepare, you are prepared to fail. You must prepare. The Boy Scouts motto, be prepared. The Royal Marines, take stock of all about you and use it to your best advantage. Look around you. See what can be used in an emergency. Know where the equipment is. Know how to use it. Plug it into your crew, your children and your wife. Do it again and again and again until one day, just as a surprise when you're out sailing, you say, OK, guys, abandon ship. They should be able to go to it just like it's numbers. That's how well you should be trained. Now, this sounds boring, I know, but I only want you to go out on your yacht your motorboat or whatever and have an enjoyable time enjoy the sensation enjoy the sailing and come home safely so that you can then sit in the pub if you want over a pint and say god hell we went out today oh we had a great time we even did our practice man overboard and our abandoned ship and it all went fine the kids loved it because there's nothing worse my friends than not practicing and your mates are in the pub that night and they say christ did you hear John, his wife and his two kids died on their boat today. And then people say, why? And then there's an inquiry. And in the inquiry, they find out somebody didn't have their life jacket. Somebody didn't do this. Somebody didn't do that. The life raft didn't go off. They didn't know how to launch it. The e wasn't on board the boat. They relied on a bloody mobile phone or a tablet or a laptop. I wouldn't have one of those things. I only have the phone on the boat to video this. When I'm at sea, it's a VHF, PLB, EPIRB, and a chart plotter, and a handheld GPS. They're made for the boat. The phone isn't. Nor's a tablet, nor's a laptop. And I don't care if they're waterproof. They don't work the same. So, okay, guys, we want you to be safe. The other thing, if you're going out on a boat regularly, and you say, or sell regularly with friends, a good idea, and a good couple of bobs spent, is go to your local St. John's and do a first aid course. Simple things, not to be too old, but I have, I've had prostate problems. I've had my appendix removed. I have a colon problem. I've had major heart surgery 22 years ago. Whew, what else? I've had a major operation on my back. Uh, I've now got uh, type two diabetes and I suffer from gout. What an old twat, eh? They should shoot me now. Sally, who's been fit all her life, she had her gallbladder removed. She's now got a bad heart. Uh, she has very high blood pressure, which she takes medication for. You know, so there's things that can go wrong for us. So we know exactly what to do. Now, I'm a trained paramedic, so I know how to deal with Sally. But the other thing is I've spent the time we've been together, 28 years teaching Sally to do whatever's necessary if something happens to me. And to put a, a fine point to it, I'm absolutely 100% sure that if anything happened to me at sea, Sally would not panic. She would get the help that's necessary. She would help me as much as, net as possible. And then she would get the boat to a safe port. 100%. And she is absolutely sure that I'd do the same. Otherwise, we wouldn't sail. Now, there's a few things I'd like to just bring up on here. EPIRBs, PLBs, GPS, AIS. Now this new thing I've not actually seen. 
I've seen an AIS receiver on the on the radio and on chart plotter, but I don't actually know a lot about this. But I understand Sego do supply this. You can buy a trans an AIS personal transponder. It can be rigged up to your boat so that if a person has this on, whoever's on watch should have it on, plus their PR, well, a PRB, AIS works the same way, similar way. When the person falls in the water, immediately that goes six inches underwater, the AIS is activated and an alarm goes on your AIS receiver in the boat. And from what I've been told, it would wake a dead person. So immediately you look onto your AIS receiver and on the screen you will see a mark that it's your crew in the drink. Now without getting complicated, you can steer by your chart plotter back to this point where this person is because it's, it's permanently giving you that person's position. Now this is a reason why when we're at sea, when we're in a yacht, I carry a waterproof VHF. I also carry a small pack of personal flares. Now these are a little pack, only about oh, a bit bigger than the fag packet. And they have little flares inside and a little striker. Very easy to use, they're not expensive, perfectly safe. Because if I fill in the water, say I'll be in short like he is, can't see more than 100 meters, she'd lose me in that. But I can see the, the mass, excuse me, the mass of the boat. So I can see her, she can't see me, but she knows where I am because of the AIS. So she stops the boat and then looks at the AIS to steer towards me. Now when I see the mass coming towards me, I then fire off a flare. So Sully can see exactly where I am. Not just trusting the AIS, if the electrics went down, you're knackered. But she can see a flare. So then when she's getting closer, I call her up on the waterproof VHF. And I say to Sally, slow the boat down. Couple of degrees to port, couple of degrees to starboard, slow down, slow down. I'm nearly alongside you. Stop the boat. And I'm alongside the boat, which I can grab hold of. Then Sally can do our recovery and get me back on board the boat. Everything's safe. We can then sit in the pub at night and say, by Christ, we'll be lucky today. Because of the way we train and the equipment we carry, we're both here to talk about it. For a few hundred quid do you realize for all the safety equipment that i would like to see you carry on your boat is less than you would spend on a bloody good holiday out for meals every night and drinking every night how much is your life worth a holiday so i hope you've enjoyed this video i tried to put it as plain as i can not too boring please listen to it carefully and take heed because the meteo, or well, the weather forecast says it's nice out there, it's sunny, and with calm seas, doesn't mean it's going to stay like that. Make sure everybody on board understands that, and make sure everybody on board is prepared for the worst. Thanks for watching, guys. Next one I hope to do will be perhaps in May, when the boy, if the boys can get down, and we'll do this live man overboard recovery, and it's something I'm sure you will take on board. Trust me. It's very quick, it's extremely easy, a child can do it, and you can save a life. Thanks again. Bye for now.